Hello and a very warm welcome to this special. We are talking today to the brand ambassador of uh, cricketnext.com. Thank you so much, Anil Kumble, for joining us. India, of course, have the series lead after that uh, win in Adelaide. Ended up being more thrilling than it needed to be. But before we talk about the specifics from that game and look ahead to Perth, I know it's a different venue, different ground, but 2008 Perth has to be among your favourite memories in cricket, Anil. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, we obviously were disappointed with... Uh, being 2 nil down going into Perth, I certainly felt that it should have been at least one all going into Perth, and uh, uh, and everybody spoke about you know how difficult it is to win a Test match in Perth, especially for, from a uh, team from a subcontinent, and not many teams had beaten Australia at Perth, so it was very special you know coming from behind, and winning at Perth against all odds uh, was something very special. I mean we won the toss, decided to bat first. Uh, again, you know, general uh, feeling was, you know, I still remember when I went out to toss, there were a few uh, former Australian players uh, turned commentators who were all by the pitch side. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very easy to, so, so okay, uh, field first, there's a field first, uh, you know, bowl first pitch. I said, yeah, I just nodded, the, nodded my head. I mean, you, you need to decide as to what you want to do and uh, I mean, it all worked out really well. Yeah, and uh, uh, it was the ground where you got your 600th test wicket as well, didn't you? Yes, uh, yeah. personally it was very uh, satisfying, not just winning the test match, but also you know, crossing a major milestone uh, Yeah, was very special. Right, let's uh, talk about the series and where it stands right now. It doesn't happen very often with the Indian cricket team that they actually start an overseas series with a win. They're not playing catch-up cricket. Now that that has happened, that's really set them up well, hasn't it, Anil, for the series? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, like I mentioned... <coughs> Uh, a great venue to start off with. I mean, generally the tradition has been that uh, you know, India plays in Brisbane and then travels to uh, Adelaide, then Melbourne, Sydney, yeah. and then probably Perth or, uh, you know, wherever you're going to play the fifth test match, if at all you're playing. So that's been the tradition. But to start off in Adelaide uh, was, was, a, uh, was, I think, a blessing in disguise uh, because of the conditions and also the record that Australia have in Adelaide uh, and, and we saw that. Uh, I think India played brilliantly. Uh, they started off really well. Uh, you know, of course, uh, the f first five batsmen uh, weren't great. Uh, they didn't, <coughs> excuse me, they didn't choose the right options when they batted. But I think Pujara's innings uh, set things up. Uh, he batted brilliantly in the first innings and he backed it up with, uh, with a wonderful score even in the second innings. Yeah. Uh, I think credit was given, you know, you have to give credit to the bowlers. Not easy when you're defending 250 and you've been bowled out, uh, you know that that's not enough uh, after winning the toss and, uh, and batting first. <coughs> but the bowlers bowled exceptionally well to bring the team back into the game. And the second innings, once you score 300 plus, it was always going to be difficult uh, with the current uh, batting order of the Australian team. So in that sense, I think, you know, India will certainly go really confident into Perth. Uh, not many times, uh, the first time that it's happened that you won a test match uh, at the start itself. So, I'm sure a lot of confidence uh, going into the second test. So, we'll talk specifics in a minute, Anil, but I just wanted to you to reflect on uh, just this from an overall Indian perspective. Do you think it was a complete performance from that point of view? Or would you do you still see that the management, because it's a very quick turnaround, will look at this and say, you know, there's a quick area, holes that we've got to fill up before we actually play the second test match? No, I think it's all about the mindset. Uh, again, you have to adapt to a different condition. I don't know how the new uh, Perth uh, pitch is going to be. It's a drop-in pitch. Uh, it could be similar to Adelaide. It could be similar to the old Perth. Mm -hmm. We don't know. So that's something that uh, will intrigue even the Australian batsmen because they are also new to the Perth pitch. Yeah. Of course, they played a few one-dayers there and, and one day one day matches at Perth at the new venue has been good batting surfaces. So generally, uh, you know, we have read reports that it will have a bit of grass, it will be a bit more quicker than Adelaide. I'm sure it will be. And curator says, bowl first if you win the toss. I think, I think that's what I was told as well at the toss in <laughs> Perth. <laughs> so it all depends on what you want to do and how you want to play the game uh, with, with the kind of uh, team that you pick. Uh, but having said that, whether you win the toss, whether you bat first, whether you bowl first, you have to do your disciplines right. I mean, I think India got it right in terms of the bowling department. One thing that they'll have to really iron out is, is their batting in the first innings. 
I think uh, there were too many loose shots too early uh, at the start of uh, a test series and, and uh, start of a session. Uh, I mean, you don't play those kind of shots uh, on, on day one of a test series yeah. when you have the opportunity to grab it uh, with both hands. And similarly, uh, in the second innings, they'll be disappointed uh, that uh, you know, they missed out on the bottom uh, five batsmen throwing the wicket around yeah. uh, to get some quick runs. I mean, it was not needed. I think India had the time to take it beyond, literally beyond Australia. If they had scored 350 plus, then it was, you know, game set and uh, the mindset totally changes as a batting unit as well. So, so that's something that they will have to certainly iron out. I think as a bowling unit, uh, you know, what they will need to do is to rest up and, and make sure that they're really fresh uh, for Perth because the conditions were pretty hot uh, in, in Adelaide uh, in terms of temperature. So they'll have to recoup and uh, be really fresh going to the test match. Let's actually talk about the bowling unit because, uh, yes, India won. Yes, they got Australia out for under 300 both digs. But they bowled a lot of overs and they were playing four specialist bowlers only. So the workload was quite a lot on the three seamers as well as the only uh, spinner who was playing. As a management then, do you worry about how they turned around for the second test match in three days? And then uh, does it start to come into your mind that maybe, just maybe, we need to find a fifth bowling option? Yeah, they will probably consider that. India will certainly look to consider that. But I don't think they would like to tinker the batting lineup uh, for the simple reason being that, uh, you know, if you look at the three overseas test victories in this year, there have been only three batsmen who have stood out. Uh, and that's been Pujara, Rahane and Virat Kohli. And if you have to win a test series, you will have to get the other batsmen to contribute as well. And the openers are a major worry. Uh, they have been inconsistent. Uh, you know, Rahul showed a little bit of uh, uh, form coming back uh, in, in the second innings. Of course, he played a lot of shots. Yeah. Uh, he was very aggressive, probably that was his way of uh, coming back into, into the groove. Murli Vijay, you know, played well, uh, did what he is capable of, but then again, you know, a, a loose shot, uh, getting out. And 18 is something that I don't think he will be happy about. He would like to kick on from there. So the opening slot is, is a worry. Rohit batted brilliantly for his 30 and then threw it away in the first innings. So he'll be disappointed. He would like to contribute as well. And Rishabh Pant, you know, we know that uh, he's, he's really young, he's uh, fearless, he goes out and, and uh, plays his natural game. But he needs to be really smart about the way he reads situations and then take it uh, deeper rather than uh, chucking it away. So that's something that India will, will be certainly worried about. They'll be happy about uh, Pujara both innings, Rahane coming back into form and Virat showed his class in the second innings. You know, he lost out in the first innings. Uh, he literally uh, batted a bit differently in the second innings because of the conditions and the situations. So, so I guess that's something that India will certainly be uh, thinking about if they have to choose the fifth bowler. I'm not really sure whether they'll go for the fifth bowler. One uh, dampener in this current uh, team is that none of the batsmen actually, you know, bowl or give you those 10 overs, other than probably Vijay. Uh, wear your coach's hat for us. It's not a hat you're unfamiliar with. Uh, you've worn it very recently. Um, let's talk a little about some of the individuals. Ashwin, let's start with him. Um, had a very long spell, more than 50 overs, and this is something you're familiar with, bowling very long spells in overseas conditions. Um, are you entirely pleased when you look at an Ashwin bowl right now with all of the things that he's doing? Or do you believe he can be more effective, when it, especially when it comes to uh, the lower order, his in, the uh, inability that the Indians in general showed to get them out? No, I think, uh, you know, he did well. He did really well in this test, uh, test match. He had to bowl a lot of overs because there were only four bowlers. And then uh, the other, uh, you know, tough uh, part for the faster bowlers is that when Ashwin bowls from the other end, and he continues to bowl from one end, then you have to rotate your bowlers. Yeah. The fa fast bowlers hardly get any break. You know, they get two minutes or one and a half minutes. Uh, thank God, if it, if it was Jadeja, it will be even lesser. Yeah. So, so that's the kind of thing that as a captain, you're constantly thinking as well. Yeah. You can't be bowling your faster bowlers in long spells. Uh, India did bowl a lot of overs uh, in the second innings. And if they have to bowl first in Perth, and if it happens to be a good batting surface, and then if you have to bowl a long, uh, you know, if you have to uh, extend your uh, overs beyond 100, then that's where, you know, how are you going to tackle that will, will come into, the, uh, into play. So from Ashwin's point of view, I thought he bowled well. His role was more to 
uh, be uh, steady and then control the game rather than be attacking. But I would have preferred him to attack, especially in the second innings, mm. because there were a few footmarks, and he will have that unless he's bowling first. Uh, he will always have some sort of a footmark because of Mitchell Stark bowling left arm over the stumps. So, he, especially when he bowls to a right hander, he needs to bowl slightly, you know, aiming at that footmark. And even, even if he misses it, it's, it's a good line even on a day one pitch, uh, especially in Australia where you will get bounce. Mm. And even if you don't get spin, the odd ball just comes in with the angle to a right hander. And if he looks to bowl that line, and if it keeps straight, then you have always the chance of uh, the batsman nicking to the wicket keeper or to the first slip. So that's a line that I would like him to bowl uh, for a right hander. But I think to the left hander, he was brilliant. I mean, five out of his six wickets uh, were off uh, left handers. Can, can it wear a spinner down? He's a finger spinner. He would have, would have used those fingers a lot in those uh, 50 odd overs he bowled in the second innings. I think 80 plus in the game. Uh, turnaround time being so quick, uh, what do you think uh, can be his challenges at Perth? No, I think it's all about fitness and I think you know, he's, he's, he's fit. Uh, so that's, that's what matters. And uh, your recovery uh, is based on how fit you are. And it takes its toll. Uh, you know, bowling 80 overs is not easy. You know, I've, I've, I've done that on a few occasions and, and then turn around uh, became tougher as I got older yeah. and that was a challenge uh, uh, you know for me uh, I still remember uh, when we played Pakistan uh, in Calcutta uh, I remember bowling the last day uh, trying to win the test match we won the test match in Calcutta and then turn around in Bangalore uh, we had to field first and I ended up bowling 50 overs here and then ended up bowling 40 overs there in Calcutta so so in 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 a matter of uh, four and a half days or five days, I had bowled 90 overs. So that takes a toll on, on the body. So I'm sure it would take a toll on Ashwin's body as well. That's something that, uh, you know, the team management will be aware of. Will you sacrifice uh, uh, Rohit Sharma uh, at, at number six and then bring in uh, a bowler? Now, a couple of other things that uh, were quite interesting in this game got talked about a lot. Why do you sense, Anil, again, has having worked with this team, with this bunch of players, that there is such a struggle consistently to get that lower order out? I mean, we've seen that throughout in uh, overseas series, saw that in England with Sam Curran. Yet again in this game, it got unnecessarily close. It's just India couldn't get Cummins, Stark, uh, Nathan Lyon out. Why do you think this is that such a skilled bowling unit struggles in this department? Uh, you were a bit of a specialist with this. You used to get lower orders out for fun. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think you can call anyone a specialist, but, but I think it's all about having patience mm. and then continuing to do the same thing that you would do for a top order batsman. Do you think yeah, they the lose moment. patience? I, I think you try too many things. Mm. Uh, you know, as, as soon as you see a lower order batsman, you suddenly th start thinking that, oh, okay, I need to get him out in, in the six balls that I have. Mm. It doesn't happen that way. You still have to restrict him. You still have to entice him. You still have to get your fields right to make sure that you know, he goes after uh, you in, in, in the right way that you want him to go after rather than, uh, you know. So, so you need to leave all those gaps and then play on his, on his mind. I mean, no, no lower order batsman will enjoy if you have two or three guys around and then you're consistently probing one line. He will go for it at some point in time. And even as a fast bowler, you need to have that kind of a patience where uh, you need to try a bouncer and then, you know, bowl different variations. But then try and keep it simple rather than looking at taking a wicket of every ball. Uh, that's something that probably suddenly happens, uh, you know, when you see a lower order back. Yeah, because uh, it's not like it's a one-off. It's almost become a consistent theme. Do you think they do, they're, they're making the same, they're repeating the same mistakes against the lower order uh, again and again in uh, conditions that have been quite different. England was different, uh, Australia is different. No, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, the batting also has come, come along, uh, you know, because of uh, various formats, everybody takes the batting so seriously and then even the lower order spends a lot of time in the nets honing their skills uh, with regard to batting. So it's not that uh, it was like before where, you know, the tail enders or the lower order batsmen didn't get an opportunity to bat. They bat the same as the top order batsmen, they get throwdowns, they get a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, stuff in terms of managing their uh, batting capabilities. So everybody works on their batting. So it's not easy to come, just come in and run through the lower order anymore. But then that's why I'm saying, you know, you need to treat them as a top order batsman and then bowl accordingly rather than 
saying, oh, okay, this is something that I can do now. I can try variations. I can bowl a bouncer. I can then bowl a wide yorker. Do whatever. I mean, you know, I don't think you need to think those lines. You just need to keep it simple. Be patient. Uh, you know, uh, cumulatively, if you can build those uh, maiden overs and build pressure, uh, the opportunity of a lower order. Uh, wilting under pressure is a lot more than a top order batsman and that's the kind of thing that you'll have to uh, take and, and it may take time it may take you a few overs extra but then as long as you uh, you know try and tighten the number of runs that you give away then you will get a wicket now conversely the indian lower order has been playing in a, a completely i mean uh, in an absurd way almost at times. Wickets have been falling in clumps, that lower order. You touched upon this earlier. Now again, as someone who uh, took a lot of pride in his batting uh, uh, in the lower order, do you sense that uh, that's uh, an area where India are missing out on uh, and uh, not emphasizing enough on the, the importance of these runs from the tail? No, it is very important. I mean, if you have to win a series, then you need contributions uh, from the top order and also from the lower order batsmen. And similarly, you need a contribution from a non-regular bowler as well, picking up that you know, one or two wickets here and there, or the odd brilliance in the field by taking a catch or a run out or, or a stumping. And those kind of things you need to have if you have to win a series. It just can't be four top order batsmen, four bowlers winning you all the time. It never happens if you have to win a series. So that's where the lower order will have to contribute. And ideally, if you set a goal for the lower order, invariably they try and reach that. You know, if you say, okay, I need 100 runs from uh, the four of you or the five of you, then if you get to 100, then you start taking it up. If you don't have any number in mind and if you say, okay, go out and play the way you play, doesn't matter, we'll get there, doesn't work. I think it's important to set some goals and that's how bowlers are built in their, uh, in their uh, DNA. If you can give them a goal, I think everybody will look to achieve that and they will take pride in, in the way. And, and it's happened before. The lower order of the Indian team has contributed a lot over the last few years. I think it's just a matter of taking some time and understanding the situation and then trying to uh, be patient and not throw away your wicket and put a prize on your, uh, on your wicket. Now, I know you touched upon some of the individuals, just wanted your reflections on one or two of them. I wanted to start with KL Rahul in particular. He's been built up as, uh, you know, a 5,000 plus run test player for India, has been, um, has been talked up and rightfully so. Some of his batting is very, very sublime. However, in that second innings, did you think that he was rushing his innings as a, as a test match opener? And uh, what sort of mind space do you see him in right now uh, as, as an opening batsman, given that there is pressure? There is a guy like uh, Prithvi Shaw in the squad, and there are others like Mayank Agarwal and even Shikhar Dhawan making a, a case. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he hasn't had a consistent run uh, in, in international cricket. Uh, he hasn't been the one who has uh, put in uh, those big scores or followed it up with, with another good score. Uh, that's something that I'm sure it's playing on his mind. And he looks a bit confused at the moment. Uh, you know, what should he do? Should he go and just play his game or should he just take his time? Uh, so so I, think, I think that's where the mindset is. Uh, I think what will probably help is to go and settle his nerves and say, look, you're going to play the next three test matches. Mm. You know, that's something I don't, I don't know whether that's happened. You know, that's something that plays on, on, a, on, on a young player when, when I know he's played a few test matches. He's already played 30 plus test matches. He's not a youngster anymore. But at the same time, it's important that someone like Rahul needs that assurance saying, look, you're going to play the next six innings or, uh, you know, three test matches. And that gives you a, a, a mindset of saying, OK, uh, you know, the team management is backing me and then I can now go out there and then play the way I want to, I can construct my innings. And that's what I think uh, would, is needed. I'm not sure if that conversation has happened, but that's something that, uh, you know, if you want Rahul, because he's extremely talented and we know what he's capable of. He's shown that in Test Match Cricket, he's shown that uh, in, in one days, he's shown that in T20. And when Australia toured India, he was instrumental in, in India winning the series. Yeah. I mean, he had a brilliant series, although he was injured, he continued to play and then uh, he, was, he, was, he contributed to the team. And, and uh, you know, not many players do that. When you know that at the end of the series, you have to probably go and, uh, you know, get a surgery done, 
uh, not many players put their hand up and and uh, and reach out and say, okay, I, I'll uh, play for the team, irrespective of whether this deteriorates and you know what what is what if uh, if I miss for six months, eight months. Today it's very difficult to come back into the team. He's taken that risk, and uh, you know I think he needs to be given that kind. I know uh, you know he's had his uh, share of uh, uh, failures, but it's not been consistent in terms of uh, the confidence that you give uh, someone like a KL Rahul. Also wanted your thoughts on Rishabh Pant in, because he held everything that came his way, uh, held all the catches, world record, equaling uh, a performance there. But in the batting, he got starts in both innings. Do you sense there's a little bit of an impetuousness in his batting? Do you believe that if he's going to be India's long-term solution as wicket-keeper, he needs to bat differently? No, I think he needs to bat according to situation. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you have a Pujara at the other end, uh, it was all about you know, trying to extend the lead. And try and uh, take it to a situation where uh, Australia are literally staring down the barrel. I mean, that's what you need to do. You need to read the situation, and even uh, you know, at that point in time, probably demanded that you know he needs to extend it by another 15 minutes. Not necessarily that he had to bat a session, maybe another 15 minutes, and then that's where you know he needs. He, he's young. You know, he's only playing his second series uh, for India, and then I'm sure he will uh, he will learn. Did you see him having the skills? Oh, I think I think he definitely has the skills. He certainly has the skills, uh, you know, wicket keeping skills. He has the batting skills. He can uh, change the game uh, in in a in a session, and that's the skill that he possesses. Not many uh, batsmen have that, yeah. and uh, he just needs to uh, be selective, uh, especially at the start of his innings. You know, once he gets uh, into that, uh, you know, you sometimes get to see him explore, and then go into a shell, and then again trying to explore and then gets out. So he just needs to get into a frame of mind where he just looks at the number of balls that he can play rather than the time. You know, when, when you have players like that who can destroy an opposition attack, uh, you know, you tend to put a, a fear in the batsman's mind saying, hey, you know what, this is test cricket, you need to play time. Not necessarily. I mean, with someone like that, it's very easy to put that thought in his mind rather than that if someone says, okay, you know what, just play 50 balls. First 50 balls, take your time. He could probably be batting on 40 or probably batting on 70, who knows. But that's the kind of uh, you know, approach that he needs to have. But he's a brilliant talent and uh, you can see that in the way he goes about uh, the confidence that he brings into the team. Of course, he needs to work on his keeping skills. That will come as he goes along. One final player that I wanted to get your thoughts on and this is a player that you've always yourself talked very highly of, uh, of Cheteshwar Pujara. Uh, and he's talked very highly of your role in his uh, development. When you were coach as well, there was a lot of talk whether he should f uh, play, whether he's a, f a misfit in the modern game and in, in Test cricket. When you saw these performances, how pleasing was you? Was it to you? And uh, what do you think he brings to uh, the, the Indian Test team? I mean, he brings what he brought, uh, you know, in, in this Adelaide Test match. Uh, he's someone who, I mean, was very similar to Rahul. What what Rahul did at number three. Uh, you know, Pujara brings in the ability to literally null the opposition attack, play the waiting game, that's exactly what is required in test cricket. And in this current Indian setup, you have five or six batsmen who can change the game in a session. And you don't want another batsman to do the same thing. There are not many Pujaras in this playing eleven. There's only one Pujara, so let him do his job. I think he's done a great job in in making sure that uh, you know everybody else rallies around uh, uh, Cheteshwar Pujara, and he's been consistent. And that's where I think you know he's he's a top-notch uh, you know Test player for India. I think all the results that India has had over the last uh, you know couple of years is because of his contribution. Of course, the team, everyone else has contributed, but. Pujara has been a mainstay as well, and that's something that I think, uh, you know, uh, it's not been recognized. But but now slowly, uh, I know he's not had great uh, returns uh, traveling outside of India on previous occasions. But then uh, you know he's been a mainstay, and and he's done that. He has his own style, and uh, strike rate doesn't really matter. I mean, in today's uh, Test cricket, not many uh, you know uh, Test matches end up in draw because everybody else is, is scoring at a fast pace. And you need one guy to just hang on and, and show that, look, you know, test cricket needs patience. You need to dry up one end. You need to make sure that you give respect to the bowlers. 
and then uh, and and look at the way he approached at the start of his innings as well. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, batsmen in the in, especially in the first innings got out to literally driving a big booming drive and then got out. And Pujara, when he first comes in, is always close to the body, just pushing, not necessarily hitting to get a boundary. So that's the kind of skill that uh, he possesses. And uh, you know, I think he showed that. Uh, what was really uh, good was that he followed it up with a, with a brilliant uh, 70 in the second innings as well. So the final thought: uh, You worked a lot with, uh, you played a lot against the great Australian teams, and played uh, and watched this Australian team as well when it had Smith and Warner. When you see that top six of Australia, do you wonder why well, I never came across a lineup like that? It does seem like a really weak and feeble batting lineup. Doesn't seem to have any confidence in itself. Yeah, it is. It is a young team. Uh, it obviously is uh, uh, tough when you have two of your best players not playing in the uh, eleven, uh, especially in the batting uh, lineup. And uh, the top seven doesn't look settled at all. Uh, you know, each one have had questions raised about their performances, their uh, skill sets at this level uh, right from the start that they played, uh, they started their career and even towards, uh, you know, other than probably Kwaja who's come back and did, re uh, has done really well, everybody else has had uh, questions including the captain. So it's, it's very strange to look at an Australian team which is, uh, which doesn't have that kind of a settled look uh, to its batting order. Uh, they have a lot more problems than uh, definitely the Indian team. Indian team looks very settled. Uh, they will have a lot more answers. There will be a lot more questions that they will have. Yes, there's lower order uh, made the batting look better in the second innings, but uh, the top order still uh, you know, has, has serious issues uh, starting from the openers. So, yes, I have not seen uh, an Australian team, uh, at least in the time that I played my cricket and, and then even uh, as recently as uh, uh, you know, two years ago, uh, you know, having this uh, unsettled look about uh, the Australian team. So at the start of the series, you said two one. Are you sticking with that, or do you? I think I'll still it? stick with it. Uh, you know, we're still. I, I mean, I'm glad that the one has happened. Uh, it's another another one. Maybe you never know. Australia can come back. I mean, they did fight. They did give a, a tough fight uh, and made it tough for uh, India, which always helps. I mean, when when you play Australia, irrespective of uh, what the uh, quality of the team is, uh, when you're playing in Australia, they'll make you work hard to earn your uh, win. And that's exactly what they did. So, Indians can't take the Aussies uh, lightly. Perth is a different venue. It's a different game. You have to start from zero again. So, it'll be a different game. I'm sure the Australians will come hard at the Indians, but they have a lot more questions than to answer than the Indian team. Okay, great, Anil. So, we'll talk to you after Perth and see where the series stands. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.